Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening. Uh, welcome to the global audience. Uh, this session is on uh, uniting the edge for tomorrow's demands. So I think uh, thank you all for those who have joined. Um, I'm going to cover um, essentially five things in the next 50 minutes. Um, there is an overview and then there's details. So please stick around. I'll keep a pace and 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 allow you to take screenshots as well. Obviously the the most interesting part of the of the virtual events is screenshots without you know not taking a picture. Uh, so the topics I'll cover are the most pressing question, which is what is edge computing? Right? Everybody has a different definition you know what do we do you know is is this an edge is that as an edge so we'll get to the bottom of that uh then the next big question comes around you know what are the killer apps what are the use cases so we'll talk about that uh and then of course we'll turn majority of the presentation around um what we are doing at the linux foundation for lf edge uh, how we are growing, and then go deeper into each of the projects, uh, and then point you to the link on how to participate. Uh, so, you know, excited to be here. Uh, I know it's not in person, but I think uh, we're now getting used to this new mode of, uh, of, of learning. So let's get straight into it. What's the definition? You already know since you you're part of the oss or open source community that we are more than linux as a linux foundation i want to put it in context where edge and iot comes in so we have several open source projects in several of these technology areas or several of these markets right and edge and iot is a big area of focus for linux foundation and we are you know, hosting or uh, uh, staffing projects that are extremely important in the edge community. Some of you already have seen the cycle here uh, where we host the project, the projects create developer community, you all participate, and then uh, technology or software is created, which results in products into deployment and then deployment leads to profit and the cycle repeats itself. So the reason I'm gonna give you this background is in a couple of our projects or specifically a project called Acreno, uh, we have a notion of what is called blueprints. And what blueprints does do is they accelerate the, 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 the bottom half of the cycle, right? From products to deployment. And, uh, and, and then that allows for rapid profits and interoperability. So we are kind of doing testing and blueprints in open source. This has never been done historically, or if it was done, it was done kind of in a, behind the closed door by end users. Uh, this is a new way of not just creating software and code, but getting code into production as fast as possible and as openly as possible. So keep that in mind because I'm going to bring the circle up again when we get to the project called Crane. All right, let's start off with what's an edge. Well, let's first understand this diagram. On the top left, you have an enterprise, you have a sensor, you have a microcontroller, you have you know, some version of an edge, as we loosely call it. Uh, or a building, and that goes into some form of a macro connectivity, whether it's a base station or whatever. And then on the bottom left of the screen, you have uh, the home, right? And you know we can all relate to that because we have connectivity going from, from our gateways back into a central office. And then you come into a telco, and then there's a whole other universe that exists called cloud. Right, and just note the 20 milliseconds here because that's a very important um, attribute that we have to sort of define. Okay, uh, and so Edge has three parameters that we look very carefully. So the classic copy copybook definition of an Edge is: Hey, I have proximity of compute and storage, so now that's an Edge. Well, even more important is the responsiveness attribute. And that's anything 
and in any application that requires roughly 5 to 20 milliseconds of latency is an edge application. So I'll give an example. If I have a sensor that wakes up and dumps its analytics and data into a gateway every week, that's an IoT application, but that's not an edge application. And then that's the responsiveness. And then, of course, there's the mobility angle where connected cars and, and, and uh, drones and all these new IoT or new connected devices that come up uh, that are all uh, interested in taking care of the uh, edge compute and storage closer to them. So that's, that's keep, keep this, uh, these three parameters in mind because I'm going to double click on this in a, in, in a lot more of these verticals. So each of these verticals, and this is a linear order of priority, industrial manufacturing, oil and gas, commerce, homes, automotive fleet, building automation, smart cities, healthcare. These are prime candidates for taking advantage of the edge computing explosion, okay? And keep in mind, edge from a market size perspective is four times that of cloud computing. So I always joke, right? If you miss the cloud revolution, don't worry. Edge is four times bigger. So keep going, right? All right. So now let's double click on what these uh, specific edge looks like. And I'm very pleased to report that we have um, a project called State of the Edge, which is a top level project under the Linux Foundation Edge umbrella. And that uh, has several of these underlying project on terminology, glossary, uh, et cetera, which are, which are issued to the community in a Wikipedia style definition, right? So if you are not, if you don't like a term, do a pull request and mod help us modify it, right? But this is a neutral, non-vendor biased terminology that State of the Edge and Glossary Project has created. And this is the latest publication, at least in terms of, of a white paper that, that is being uh, shown here, uh, which goes and defines the terminology of an edge. So at the macro level, um, the community is saying, hey, there's really two macro level types of names. There's the user edge, and then there's the service provider edge, right? The, 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 the purple and the greenish teal. Okay, uh, and they kind of blend in. Okay, so it's not like a hard cutoff, and we all know that in what industries and where. So that's the first thing. Then, if you double click on the user edge, you get into uh, three flavors of that. On the very left extreme uh, bottom of the screen, you will see what is called constrained device edge. These are devices that are constrained because of location, memory, footprint, hardening, uh, connectivity, et cetera, et cetera, right? They are microcontroller-based devices. They could be embedded. They could be, you know, a whole bunch of uh, devices that, again, we're not saying what is right or wrong. We are just saying they are constrained. And there is a very important distinction there because you cannot run, you know, the entire you know, Kubernetes or OpenStack or any of these high level software on these devices. Memory is limited and you can only do so much and you can only connect to a certain uh, network and let them perform some level of predictive maintenance and AI on the on the device, right? So that's kind of the, the, the leftmost. Then in the middle, you have the smart edge, a smart device edge, which is really uh, phones or PCs or, 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 or some sort of a gateway, right? Which is, or server, right? Which, which is reasonably protected physically, right? From, from a, a security perspective, right? Semi-secure, I should say, uh, in an area, right? It's, it could be inside a building, et cetera. And then you have the, uh, the true building factories, uh, homes, et cetera, where it's called um, on-prem data center edge, right? So these are, you know, maybe two to four servers, depending on the size of the building and factory. But all these are sort of under the control of the end user, okay? Whether it's a person, an organization, or a, a service provider, it doesn't matter. And then you have the last mile. And we know what that means, right? It's a various forms of connectivity to get into a service provider network. And the service provider edge then starts off with some sort of a base station or, or, or some hardwired telco uh, 
exchange point and then gets into a smart central office, right? Uh, aggregation hub, whatever. Up to that point, you are in the 20 millisecond zone. And so that's where you're getting most of your um, latency uh, and edge applications. Everything after that, regional data centers, centralized data centers, these are not edge data centers. These are not edge compute. So uh, let's be very clear on what is edge and what is not. Okay. And, and I wanted to spend a little bit more time so that people understand that it's not just you know, physical proximity, but also responsiveness and a whole bunch of mobility that goes with the edge. And again, these definitions are very, very important because, um, you know, uh, we don't want uh, a, a pollution of a marketplace where everybody calls everything edge. Okay. With that said, let's get into the killer apps. Um, we, we, we did a survey about a couple of um, years ago, and this is still true, uh, where Applications have, um, you know, a, a set of needs to use um, low latency and accelerated processing, right? But what are the technologies that are helping fuel this revolution? And that's what has, is there at the bottom of the screen. So you have the 5G technology. For those of you who are not familiar with this and non-networking folks, it is all low latency, um, high bandwidth, like extreme high connectivity, right? And this is huge. And it's not just us watching, you know, YouTube on a faster bandwidth. That's not what 5G brings. It brings a whole different set of applications and latency is the key factor there. Uh, the applications on the edge are enabled by what is called microservices, right? So the, the, the microservices have also uh, been, uh, you know, utilized here for helping these applications. AI has matured where you can actually do predictive maintenance and analysis at the, at the uh, on-site and on these different uh, edges. Hardware has come a long way with all these acceleration techniques. And then the last piece of the puzzle where you can actually work closely with your service provider to provide on-demand network function virtualization or network function slicing or uh, network slicing as, as a lot of people call it, right? All those things enable you to drive these applications. These purple arrows are really showing that these technology are building blocks of various categories of new applications, whether they these applications are on the infrastructure side, autonomous devices side like drones and vehicles, or they are immersive experiences or analytics. Okay, so uh, really it is very powerful and we're seeing a whole set of applications come up. Uh, when you do a survey, obviously you're gonna get results based on who take the survey, but this is a pretty good sample of what are the killer apps. There's no one killer app, okay? But what is important is, and I always try to summarize, you know, what are the killer apps and what are the constitutions of a killer app? It's really anything that is non-traditional video. So things coming from drones or streams or cars or whatever, and connected things that could move, right? It could be, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, a car that drives itself. It could be video content delivery with 360 video. It could be AR, VR. It could be an automated factory, which is a huge use case that's coming up. It's gaming is big, right? Uh, surveillance is big. So uh, these are killer apps. The industry is still working on markets that are utilizing these killer apps. Um, and so it's, it's getting to a point where we are seeing a lot more support for these applications as we move into the edge computing. All right. So with that market background, I'm going to talk about LF Edge, which is an umbrella within the ecosystem. Now, for those of you on the call, if you are not part of this ecosystem, I would definitely encourage you to join or, or, or at least take a look at what you can utilize from it. But if I take the diagram of where, uh, of defining the edge, and then add another dimension to it, which is the Y axis, uh, you can see that for each of these edge, whether it's a user edge or a service provider edge, you can either have infrastructure related things or you could have application related uh, software. Okay, fairly straightforward. Hardware up the way to software in terms of applications. 
And so what we have done is we have almost eight projects now in LF Edge. And uh, most of them are shown here. We just had a recent one, which uh, we need to add. I'll, I'll talk about that in a bit. But um, these projects um, are, are, are highlighted by the size and the shade of the, the bubble here. So there are two stage three projects, Acrano and Edgex Foundry. And then there are you know stage two projects, again, which is one, one step below, which is the Home Edge, Beetle, Eve. Uh, and then we have uh, stage one projects that have um, you know a lot of interest and in visibility and community, and you know they'll just progress into the future stages, and that's Fledge and Open Horizon, right? And then, of course, State of the Edge, as I, as I talked about, is, a, is stage two. Uh, these projects are, are situated uh, in this x-axis where you, you got EdgeX Foundry, you know, very close to the application frameworks for, for IoT. Uh, Fledge more on the constraint environment, if you may, towards more of the left-hand side. Uh, then you have, you know, uh, infrastructure projects. And, and then Acrano itself is, there's an arrow going back and forth. That project has two parts to it. One is it brings the telecom or telco uh, use cases and software, but it also provides uh, uh, the framework by which uh, blueprints can be created across the entire LF Edge, all the projects, not just LF Edge projects, but upstream and downstream projects. And this is the blueprint which I talked about for the circle to accelerate deployment. Okay. All right. So let's put this in a physical diagram. And, and now you will see why open source has really, really come a long way to provide a whole bunch of solutions for everybody in their uh, landscape. So starting again from the same thing, you got the left-hand side, the mobile networks on the top uh, left, residential, uh, small, medium business and enterprise, whether they have the on-prem data center or gateways, doesn't matter. Then you have the uh, edge coming in and then you have the cloud. And if you look at the projects uh, outside LF Edge that will collaborate very closely with the LF Edge, you have what is called ORAN or Open RAN. This is a telecom initiative for open radio access networks. Um, they will be collaborating, or in fact, they they already have uh, with a Cranoid stack from a blueprint perspective. Uh, and then you have sort of the enterprise side of things with EdgeX Foundry, Fledge, and and even Home Edge. Uh, and you have All right. Are we good? Okay, so, okay, I'm ready to go. Alrighty, and this really shows uh, that it is live, okay? And yes, I don't have a IoT gateway sitting in my basement here, which I don't have a basement, it's California. But anyway, so let's go on. Um, it's, it's the second part of, uh, of the uh, presentation, obviously. So we'll have two flavors. Uh, two flavors here. So anyway, so what I was saying was we have um, 
the uh, comply we have the consortiums and standards so etsy mac a big participant here uh, and then we have acc and we have iic that um, that is important for uh for this for this so let's let's just go quickly into the next slide um, and these are some of the use cases that are coming up on the lf edge uh, projects um, i think if you can hear some feedback i could probably Mute the microphone on my hold on. Okay, let's see. Voice is still going through the web pass. So if I mute the f okay, can you hear me now? All right. Uh, if I mute the phone, how will it go through the phone? Sorry. Okay, I'm just gonna continue with some feedback. Um, I got a text saying we can hear you. All right, so the use cases here are uh, on the home ed side, anomaly detection surveillance. Uh, and I'll talk about that in a bit. From the telco edge, there are blueprints around uh, radio cloud, there's blueprints around uh, edge applications for connected vehicles, connected classrooms, um, etc. Then you have building automation, control, smart cities, and then of course uh, there is the IoT predictive maintenance. So we'll talk about that, each of these uh, projects and their blueprints uh, very, very quickly. Before we get to each of these projects, I want to make sure that we understand that there's a landscape like all our projects. Thank you. You will now. I'm going to talk about the LF Edge in terms of summary. Um, okay, there you go. So LF Edge again, our vision and our goal is to unify the the frameworks that the IoT in Edge, the Telco Edge, the Cloud Edge, and the Enterprise Edge create. Um, and clearly, the, the, you know, we mentioned the project, but these frameworks, because each of these frameworks, uh, and we call it the plumbing layer, are, are, are important for a lot of the cross-section of the, of the population. Uh, if you look at the members that join and participate and influence, uh, they are from a wide cross-section, right? They, could, they are all, you know, different types of hardware and silicon because it's independent, you know, ARM, Intel, Qualcomm, et cetera. You got, you know, the cloud players, Baidu, Tencent, et cetera. You got your industrial player, you know, Dynamic, OSI, SOC, et cetera. And then you have a whole bunch of telcos and, and other participants that are uh, 
uh, that are looking at uh, you know uh, not just collaborating uh, uh, or but but also participating in in this uh, right. So uh, let me see if I can go to the next slide. All right. So here we go. Uh, all right. Okay, there you go. So the edge community is thriving and it is very lively, okay? And you can see that uh, there's been a huge member increase. Uh, there's been a huge uh, project increase, uh, lots of deployments going on, downloads. I mean, even this slide is out of, out of uh, time. Okay, so we can't hear at all. Or maybe not. Hello. Uh, okay, I don't know. We can hear you. We can hear you. Oh, we can. Okay, okay, then then that's fine. Okay, because I was getting no feedback at all. Okay, then I'm I'm good to go. I all right. Um, okay, so there was a heavy increase in the developers. So one thing I also mentioned is um, during the pandemic, which we are all going through, uh, work and coding is the best form of distraction for a lot of us, right? So what's happening is we're seeing a steady increase in the number of developers as, as we don't travel and as we don't, you know, uh, do a lot of things that we normally would do. So we're, we're, you know, thank you again for the community that has been participating. You're creating huge value uh, because one of, you know, if you look at one of the Forbes article, it, it, it said very clearly that IoT and Edge are, the most important things post pandemic and we better get ourselves ready for that. So anyway, so the community is going significantly higher and you know, uh, going quite well. And so now uh, we are gonna get to the introduction of LF Edge projects. And let me go into the specifics of each of these projects. As I said, Acreno, uh, it is aimed at making sure that telecom use cases and uh, cloud services at the edge operate seamlessly, and it's doing it through a set of blueprints. EdgeX Foundry, I, and by the way, these are stage three impact projects. They've been around for more than three years. A huge community of following, very solid deployments, very solid downloads, right? EdgeX is that IoT framework that I talked about, the plumbing layer. And we'll go into each of these in detail. EVE is an on-prem uh, project, on-prem uh, virtualization project edge virtualization uh, contributed by a startup called uh, Zedeta, but now it's gotten a community behind it. Home Edge, uh, again, contributed by Samsung, uh, and, and it's getting to a, uh, a lot of uh, real releases that are coming out. Uh, we'll talk about that. State of the Edge, I already mentioned. Uh, and then we have uh, stage one at large project that are, um, that are gaining a lot of momentum. For example, Fledge, Open source for industrial edge, you know, specifically architected for IIoT. And again, remember that constrained device uh, picture. Um, Beetle, again, uh, it's it's coming from the cloud. And how do you do a general purpose cloud platform lifecycle management with APIs and things like that? And our newest project, Open Horizon, which came from IBM, um, is is really managing the lifecycle of containerized workload for the edge and including machine learning. So some very, very good flavored projects that are uh, there. So let me go through this very, very quickly. And I know there are a lot of questions, so I, I do want to leave a lot of time at the end for answering them. Uh, let's start off with Acrena, okay? The diagram here is just a deeper diagram of the first one, so we won't go into that. Uh, but what we have here are blueprints and, and right now there's over 16 blueprints and blueprints are something that the community has tested uh, in a declarative configuration that you can actually, you as an end user can actually utilize and rest assured 
that the entire software and hardware and declarative configuration of that particular use case is good to go. So you have, uh, and, and here are just some examples. So if I want to take software and create a cloud at the edge of the data center or below a basement, whether I have a one server or six servers, that's the network cloud blueprint or the radio edge blueprint. There are blueprints on the Mac side of things. There are blueprints that talk about connected vehicles, right? How does a vehicle connect to a base station into a cloud and how do you do uh, you know, more precise uh, use cases beyond just a GPS, right? That's that blueprint. Uh, you have a huge blueprint that is being very actively used right now on AI ML, as well as augmented virtual reality at the edge. Uh, one example is the classroom and how, uh, you know, a lot of users are monitoring through AR, VR and uh, applications on LF Edge and specifically Crano, uh, the classroom experience uh, of students, right, in a virtual world, critically important. There's, there's blueprints on automated factory. Uh, so keep in mind uh, what this, what the goal here is, it's a finite set of configurations to reduce complexity. We've all coded and we've all been, you know, engineers in our lifetime where we would have, you know, enter parameters one through 25. And then there is another uh, tree that you go and enter another 50 parameters. And then you have, before you know it, you have an N by N combinations of testing that you got to do. At the end of the day, majority of them are not needed. So let's go with a finite set of config configurations to reduce complexities, which is what defines a blueprint. And some of these blueprints are really optimized for the edge, okay? And these are turnkey solutions and very, very important uh, uh, projects. So if you're not part of a Crano, please join, okay? Uh, the second project is uh, EdgeX Foundry. Uh, again, these are in just alphabetical order, but more importantly, stage three. EdgeX Foundry is one of our older projects where uh, it creates a very flexible IoT framework. Okay, not everybody needs to abstract the physical devices and not everybody needs to figure out the 160 messaging protocols that go back and forth and not everybody needs to figure out how to connect to the cloud. So the right small diagram is the architecture diagram and really it's all around, you know, how do you really uh, take advantage of uh, a generic plumbing layer or framework so that you can focus on your value add and not just on connecting and life cycle management and, and things like that. So Edix Foundry has been downloaded 5 million, now it's probably 6 million uh, when the slide was created. So very, very important um, project for us. Uh, the use cases that I want to highlight are all focused around uh, manufacturing, for example, where you know you could have remote monitoring of production equipment, um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, then there is the retail market, which is a very big user of uh, EdgeX, EdgeX, EdgeX Foundry. You know, interchangeable nerve terms. Uh, here, uh, you know, I know retails right now, you know, in a different situation, but it's even more important to have much more of a uh, a newer experience on retail. So you know, we're seeing a lot of a lot of use cases and a lot of requirements getting added there. And then of course, building automation, smart buildings, controlling all of that, uh, you know, sitting on, a, on an IoT gateway. Originally this came from Dell, but I think now it's a very diverse community, uh, you know, very important part of the ecosystem. Um, now the key point here is this is agnostic to the hardware, agnostic to the operating system. So you, it doesn't matter what OS you load on it. It is agnostic to the protocols, uh, sensors, and the endpoint. And I'm even gonna add, you know, independent of the language in which you write, okay? Um, and it's just written as a loosely coupled distributable set of microservices. So, so think of it that it's a loose collection so you can actually uh, bring it together very, very quickly, okay? Uh, so that's Ajax. And then if you go to uh, some of the stage two projects, uh, we have Eve that is um, um, on-prem and it's an edge virtualization engine as the acronym would say. Um, but it is, it, is, it is used to simplify the development and orchestration and security of 
a lot of these applications that sit on-prem, right? Where connectivity is not guaranteed. It could be intermittent, it could be permanent, it could be partial. Um, so how do you consolidate a mix of, you know, VMs and containers, maybe legacy apps on a on a edge hardware, right? That's sitting somewhere in the on-prem uh, area. Uh, and how do you do it securely because the parameter is no longer there? Uh, there's a lot of uh, focus on the zero trust security in, in EVE. Uh, there's a lot of support for uh, bare metal and orchestration, right? So uh, keep in mind, this project is is very valuable on um, on a whole bunch of on-prem gear for IoT, okay? And it kind of feeds into the rest of the projects as well. So that's EVE. Then you have the home edge. So think of that equivalent inside our homes, right? Where you have a whole bunch of different connectivity options, right? Whether it's your TV or your fridge or your nest or your thermostat or, uh, you know, those are one thing. But then you have uh, more two-way interactions, more services coming through, more, uh, more uh, surveillance coming through. Uh, and, 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 and so this project is particularly focused on you know, creating that lifecycle management robust framework for the, the home edge, right? Or the device, the software that goes on your device inside the home. Uh, specific use cases that have already been sort of released in the in the open is service off offloading, right? When uh, device doesn't have the capabilities, you know, so move things off, uh, low latency uh, compute frameworks for a lot of real time data, uh, etc. Uh, how do you do device management? How do you do service management? How do you do, um, you know, which device performs which service, right? So there's a lot of cool features that are uh, being uh, being it, uh, developed as part of uh, as part of home edge. Uh, state of the edge again. This is a non-software product project. Um, so as I said, uh, it produces uh, research, it produces glossary, it produces landscape, it produces a lot of important things that the community can all align on in terms of definition, etc. And um, make sure that edges is, is a location, not a thing. There's a lots of edges, but at least we're trying to de refine and define it properly, et cetera. So in April, the whole state of the edge moved in to LF Edge as a top level project, which then folded in the glossary and things like that. Okay, so very important project here. Um, and then of course, some of the very exciting new projects that have uh, really taken off quite well, Beetle, um, is is uh, is one of the projects where you know coming from a cloud side of the world and coming from an edge, how do you blend that line so that you can have a lifecycle management of applications on board, right? You you, want, you can process drones, for example, um, and and how do you go and put AI ML as close to the edge as possible so that you know you you can inspect images video images via AI of a drone, okay? I know this sounds like very, very futuristic, but it is here today, right? Releases are there, and you can actually, it works on x86, ARMS, MIPS, it's OS agnostic. So you can see the theme of the projects we have, OS agnostic, hardware agnostic, cloud agnostic, connectivity agnostic, etc. because those are the frameworks where you don't want every company, every product, every application to reinvent the wheel. That's what we do. That's open source. Okay. That's not where you differentiate. So let's all come together and, and not reinvent these basics of, of, uh, of edge. And then, as I said, fledge in a, in a, in an industrial environment, IIoT constrained community, you have a framework here, which again has several of these use cases, whether it's, uh, you know, transformers or turbines or, you know, any of these mines and factories where predictive maintenance and, and AI analytics is needed. Um, we just released um, the, uh, TensorFlow support on it uh, for, for Google on the north side of things. Uh, plus it's got, you know, integrated security management and things like that. So again, very, very exciting projects here. And then the newest project uh, that joined LF Edge is Open Horizon. 
where yeah, you know, you're managing life cycle and a containerized uh, asset, including machine learning asset, and then distributing it into these environments, right, in, in, in a very high scale. Uh, so very important on this one. Now keep in mind, on surface, they're all IoT projects. On surface, they're all edge projects. On surface, it may look like, oh my God, why so many projects? But that's where Blueprints come in. That's where Acrano comes together and brings everything together, okay? So key takeaways. We are here to harmonize and unify these various edges that IoT, Enterprise, Cloud, and Telecom see. We are here to keep uh, op keep the edge open and interoperable uh, in collaboration with uh, consortiums and, and SDOs. And it's similar to other huge projects like CNCF and LF networking and things like that. If you want to get involved, just very simple step one, get an Linux Foundation ID, visit the wiki, and start participating in any of these things. Okay, And that's your uh, wiki for the edge. Uh, I think we have about five minutes or so to take questions. So I'm just going to go in a linear order. Um, and and obviously, the first one was audio. So you know, uh, that one's gone. Uh, all right. OK. All right, these are. All audio issues. Okay, okay. All right, so the first one was what the purple are. Okay, so that one's okay. Uh, I think I answered that. All right. Okay, if you have any, okay. All right. Uh, okay. What? Okay. So I think. Uh, so, so one of the question is, um, how do you work closely with standards and and other uh, organizations? Okay. So clearly, uh, I think I mentioned that uh, SE Mac is important. IIC and ACC. So ACC is the Automotive Edge Computing. Uh, framework uh, or consortium, which is the Toyota's led uh, edge computing for automobiles. So we work, they are an associate member and, you know, blueprints are created in Crano for that. So that's kind of how it works. Um, if you have any other questions, please see if you want to type it in. I will be able to answer them in the time frame if, if we can get through all of these. Uh, okay, next question. Okay. Okay, here you go. All right, I think most of these are audio things anyway. Uh, all right, I think that's the end of the presentation. I'm going to stop now. Thank you for coming. Sorry for the audio issues. I think we had tested the system, but not sure what happened. Uh, again, keep the conversation going. Uh, visit the uh, number two track of the project updates and keep going. Thank you very much.